Teach us on tonight, amen, so that we may grasp uh, that which God has for us. Amen. So, thank you, Lord. Uh, pray for uh, people and men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Pray for our upcoming council that the Lord will bless. It's a virtual council that the Lord will bless and encourage our hearts. Amen. Well, we'll ask the church to stay. Sister Charlene. Pray for my son David and his wife Amber. They'll be saved. Yes, amen. And another child on the way. Another child. Yes, so they're going to be raising them right. Yes. Well, so they get on fire for God. Yes, that's two. That's two. That's it. Uh, David's quiver is full. <laughs> so let us pray. Let the church stand. 
Let it be hard. Pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you and praise you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you woke us up this morning and you started us on our way. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is gathered together under the sound of our voice and those that would be tuning in virtually, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you bless them and encourage their hearts. And Lord, we ask you to bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to against us. And we pray, Lord, that you manifest your will, manifest your desires. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that your hand continue to rest, rule, and abide. Save, Lord, and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Remember each and every request in a special way. Lord, bless David and his wife. Bless the children, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, bless the household, that the household be saved in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory and honor. Bless the Bible study on tonight. Send forth the word. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost manifest. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Certainly God is good to us. Amen. And he's made ways for us where we have seen no way. I want to uh, turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter number 2. Amen. We want to finish up that particular chapter on today, and um, it is good for us uh, to follow after the leading of the Lord, and the Lord wants me to teach this, this second Peter, uh, first Peter book, so uh, the reason why I say that is, you know, uh, you can study the book as we uh, begin our Bible study, in other words, you can study beforehand, and Next week will be on chapter number three, if the Lord say the same, Lord willing. Amen. And I want you to drop down with me um, to uh, verse uh, 13, chapter number two, first Peter chapter number two, verse 13. And uh, today we'll be talking about submission, submission. Submission uh, to authority. Submission to authority. And um, if you were to look at a background of this particular scripture and what kind of was going on when it was written, uh, at this particular time, uh, Rome was in charge of, of Jerusalem. They had conquered uh, Jerusalem and they had occupied that space and the, the, the Christians there uh, and also the Jews they were under Roman authority and uh, God uh, wanted them to submit to authority and as we get ready to see in the scriptures uh, we'll see why but uh, uh, but it's it's good uh, to understand uh, what's going on and it's good to be able to apply it to today. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. He doesn't change. Yeah. And God's, God's, God's word never changes. And it applies to all in every dispensation or every uh, time period in which one lives. So we see here then uh, in 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse 13 it says, Submit yourselves uh, to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So, so that first word, he said, submit, submit yourselves. And um, if we were to give you a working definition of submit yourselves, it would mean literally to abide under, to abide under, to abide under. And oftentimes, uh, when we say, our culture, when we say submit yourselves, we think of it as a negative term. 
But uh, in God's eyes, it's not a negative term. It's a positive term. And, and to submit or to abide under uh, means that uh, one should obey. One should obey. And uh, God himself wants us and, and people to obey leadership. Amen? God establishes leadership. And to the fact where David, when King Saul was after him, uh, and, and Saul was delivered into David's hand, uh, David uh, quoted the scripture, says, touch not, my pro uh, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Uh, why? Because even though God had uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, changed the leadership uh, from Saul to David, David was still recognizing Saul as a leader. Amen. Setting forth an example. Amen. We ought to acknowledge our leaders and we ought to, how can I say that word? Respect our leaders. Now, uh, you got some leaders that are, that are wicked. You got some leaders that are good. Amen. You got some leaders that are semi, <laughs> good and wicked, if you how to say it that way. But uh, uh, the Lord really wants us to respect their office, amen, respect their position, even though you may not respect the individual in the office, but for the Lord's sake, respect the office that the individual is in, amen. So uh, if we have that as a foundational understanding, then we can move on uh, to and get further get into this verse. He says, submit yourself, notice what he says, to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Now, he says to every ordinance. And what he's meaning there is submit yourselves to, to every human institution of man. Amen? Submit yourself to every uh, authority that man has established. That word every there, it means every. Amen. Submit yourselves to the laws of your of your federal government, your state government, your local government, and uh, also institutions, schools, uh, uh, municipalities, uh, uh, churches. You know, every institution and it is covered under this verse. Amen. And submit yourself to every regulation uh, that has been established. That, that, now notice, I'm going to say this, that does not interfere with the law of God. Amen? We're going to get in that as well. As long as the laws are, are don't uh, come against uh, the word of God and what God requires you, God says submit. Amen? Uh, Jesus uh, was asked by Peter, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you know, our taxes are due. I'm paraphrasing. Our taxes are due. So Jesus said, well, here comes a fish. Uh, look in the fish's mouth and, 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 and render that which is, uh, belongs to Caesar unto Caesar and render that which belongs to God unto God. What, what do we get from that? We get from that that Jesus uh, uh, was himself also paying taxes. Amen. Uh, he was honoring uh, uh, Caesar, even though Caesar was uh, uh, against uh, the kingdom of God. But it was the law. Amen? It was the law. So he submitted. Jesus gave us an example. He submitted to the law. Amen? So, so we see here, he says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man, every uh, human institution and authority now notice, he says, for the Lord's sake. Amen? For the Lord's sake. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Whether it be the king supreme or the governors as unto them that are sent by him for uh, the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So we ought to submit ourselves uh, to every authority. You know, live in compliance uh, with with human government, 
as, as much as we can. The Bible says as much as life in you, uh, live what? Peaceably with all men. And, and the Lord wants us to do that as living examples. He wants us to be submissive as living examples of do-gooders, if you allow me to say it, of people who are, uh, uh, are allowing their light to shine before men that they may see their good works and glorify their Father which is in heaven. God has not called you to be a rebel, amen, uh, 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 a lawbreaker, amen. He has not called you to be that. And he has, he has not called you to, to be one that opposes authority if that authority is not in opposition to his will or to his desires. Amen? Now, notice, notice then. He says, submit yourselves, we in 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse 13, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Amen? Uh, and uh, whether it be to the king as supreme or, uh, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that what? Do well. Now, go with me just real quick over to the book of Acts. Acts chapter uh, 14. I mean, I'm sorry, Acts chapter number 4 and verse 19. When it comes down, I'm just trying to give you some scripture here, when it comes down to opposition to God, amen, uh, uh, we should always stand on the side of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, verse 19 says, but Peter and John answered. This is when they were uh, beating them. Uh, they desired to beat them uh, uh, for preaching in the name of Jesus. They didn't, they didn't actually beat them. They, they, they wanted to get them. But they said, well, for the people's sake, we'll just charge them. We'll just threaten them and let them go. This is when they healed uh, the, the, the lame man that was brought uh, to the gate. Amen. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the Bible says immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, with Peter and John, began to walk into the temple. Uh, the man, he didn't walk, he leaped. <laughs> Praising God. Amen. I would have leaped too. <laughs> Praising God. And when they saw it, amen, that gave Peter the opportunity to preach Christ. And the crowd that was gathered around, some believed, amen. But when the, the Pharisees and those that were in leadership uh, came around, um, they were upset and angry and said, we've got to do something to these men, lest the people uh, believe on Jesus. Because y'all remember that they got together and, 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 and crucified Jesus, put him to death. Uh, they suborned liars, amen. And, and, and had Jesus put to death, but that was all part of God's plan. Tell somebody that's all a part of God's plan. Hallelujah. When, when people do you evil and do you wrong, it's all a part of God's plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you look at it like that and count it all joy, uh, you'll do well. So we see here that uh, verse, verse number, uh, 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 chapter number four, verse 19. But notice, they, they threatened him and told him, don't preach in that name. Uh, and notice what Peter said. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, ye judge. Amen. Peter was saying, if, uh, if, if you judge whether or not it's, it's, it's better for us to hearken unto you or God, you make the choice. Basically, he, they were being sarcastic, you know, because they believed that they should have made the right answer, say we should answer God, amen. We should follow after God. And that's the way we ought to. 
You know, we ought to follow after God when man's laws uh, uh, violate the will of God. What are we to do? Amen. We've got to follow after God. Notice, even with uh, 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 Daniel and the, and the three Hebrew boys, when they first went over there to uh, Babylon uh, under their captivity, they were uh, given a choice to eat certain uh, foods. And they realized that those certain foods were against their dietary regulations. Amen? Now, they didn't get all up in an uproar. They, they counseled with the, the, the one that was over them, saying, hey, look, you give us a certain amount of days, and, and we'll eat uh, what, what we are prescribed to eat, and, and you be the judge. Amen? And y'all know what happened. They, they obeyed God. Amen? When you obey God, everything works out. Amen? When you walk with God, everything works out. Uh, and it worked out for their good. Now, let's go back over to our scripture. Uh, uh, it says, submit yourselves. Second, uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse 13. It says, submit yourselves uh, to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Amen? Uh, why should we do it? It's for the Lord's sake, you know? And, 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 and. He's going to get more into it as we get down into these verses. But uh, we ought to, at all times, glorify God. Amen? Uh, when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, God brought them out for his glory. Amen? Amen. And, and God freed them not to serve themselves, but freed them to serve him. Amen? Same principle applies to you. When God brings you out of the world into the Holy Ghost Church, he frees you uh, from the world not to serve yourself, but to serve God. Amen? Amen? And, and notice, in serving God, we have to serve one another. Amen? We've got to serve one another. And, and, and how do you know that you pass from death unto life? By the love that you show one to another. Uh, Jesus, when, when he was teaching his disciples, and they oftentimes, they disputed about who would be great in the kingdom. And Jesus told them, the greatest among you is going to be his servant. Amen? Uh, uh, Jesus uh, taught him, he showed him by example that, that when he began to wash the disciples' feet and, and Peter said, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet, you know? And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, I have nothing to do with you. And Peter said, Lord, wash my, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head too. Wash me all. Amen? Uh, why? Because he wanted to be a part of Jesus. And, and Jesus was giving them a, an example. He said, what I have done unto you, do it unto your brethren. Amen. Jesus, he, 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 he marked it out. He said, I come to serve. Amen. We ought to serve one another. Amen. And not, not only the household of faith, but we ought to serve people that are in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. We ought to do that. Uh, we ought to be concerned about people. We ought to be concerned about others. God is concerned about people. Uh, God is concerned about others. That's why the speaking the scriptures. God so loved the world uh, that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Why? Because he was concerned about people. When, when any, any vision that God gives you, it has to attach to helping others. Amen? If it's not attached to helping others, it's not attached to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Now, notice then. Uh, notice what he says. He says, uh, uh, submit yourself uh, to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Do it for the Lord's sake. Whether it be the king supreme, doesn't matter who it is, 
the king, you know, back then, they had a king. Uh, uh, now we got a president. Amen. Uh, but, but notice, uh, 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 our, uh, unto our governors and unto them that uh, as, as unto them that they are what? Sent by him for the punishment of what? Evildoers. In other words, people that are in authority, whether they be wicked, whether they be righteous, uh, here they're talking about worldly governments and authorities. Uh, submit yourself to them because they are also a part of God's plan. Amen. God rises and sets people in order and position for his glory. Amen. To regulate. God, see this scripture tells us that, that not only does God recognize his kingdom, but he recognizes the, the kingdom and authority of the world. Amen. And he uses the kingdom and authority of the world for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, 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 so we ought to respect the laws of, of man. Amen. We ought to expect them because they're established for the punishment of who? Evil doers. Those that do wicked. Amen. Those that do uh, 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 evil. The, the law is for the who? The lawless. People that act without laws. That's why he's established his law. Now notice that. Um, uh, uh, and they're also there, not for the punishment of, also for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do what? Well. well. So they're established then for us also that do well. In other words, when we abide by the laws of man, and it is recognized, that we are abiding by the laws of men. I don't take the glory for that. I don't take the credit for that. Uh, we give God the glory. We give God the credit. Amen? Because it's not in us to do good. Uh, but, it's, but, but God puts it in us. Amen? Amen. Now notice. Thank you, Jesus. Now notice then. I want you to go with me uh, to Romans chapter uh, Chapter 13. Paul picked that thing up. Amen. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 1. He says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Those, that's those authorities. For there is no power but of God. They wouldn't have authority. They wouldn't have power unless it came from God. That's why he said, do it for the Lord's sake. Because these powers and authority, they come from God. Amen. He establishes order. He establishes power and authority. Now note, he says, uh, but of God, the powers that be are what? Ordained of who? Of God. Amen. It is God that ordained police officers. It is God that ordained any power of leadership, amen, of authority. God ordained it. He said it. Amen. Uh, he put it in the hearts of people to be able to establish these things. Alright? So he says, whosoever therefore resists the power resists the ordinance of God. See? Now, if, if, if I resist the power and authority of the police officers, then I'm not really resisting the police officers. I'm really resisting God. Amen. You follow me? Thank you, Jesus. Now notice. He says, and they that resist shall receive to themselves what? Damnation. Amen. Damnation. So you can't uh, uh, speak evil of leadership, speak evil of powers and authority, and not suffer a consequence. Amen. I know that. Why? Because power and authority uh, uh, is, has been established by God. Now notice, verse number three. For rulers are not a terror of good works. Uh, they, don't, they don't come after you for good works, but up to evil. If you're doing wrong, if you're doing evil, then you should be afraid. <laughs> I know. Wilt thou then be afraid 
of the power. You know, uh, you shouldn't be afraid of the power. You should respect the power. Uh, if you're not, if you're not doing wicked, uh, if you're not stealing, if you're not robbing, uh, if you're not a taxi dater, <laughs> uh, you follow me? You don't, you don't, you don't be afraid. Uh, now notice, he says, uh, uh, "Do that which is good, and thou shalt have what." Praise of the saints. So you should always seek to do that which is good. Uh, why? Because you're the servant of God. Uh, you, you're his example. Hallelujah. You are, are his light. You are his, his, his candle uh, that is set on the hill <laughs> that cannot be healed. Now notice then, verse, verse number four, he says for talking about the rulers and authority, for he is the minister of God. Look at, look at, look how he's, he's saying that. The minister of God. Talking about uh, uh, non-Christian people. <laughs> uh, uh, they're ministers of God. They've been chosen by God. Ministers of God to, uh, to thee for good. They're there out there to protect you. They, they're out there to help you. Now notice, uh, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in what? In vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon them that do what? Evil. Evil. That's why God wants you to submit to uh, the authority that is out in the world. Amen? Why? Because he does not want you to receive a just recompense of reward. <laughs> in other words, he wants you to receive that which is good, amen, for your good deeds. Now notice, huh? notice then, what verse we in? Let's go to verse 5. Wherefore, ye must be subject, amen, that's, that's what Peter is saying in his verse 13, submit, uh, same thing as being subject, amen. Uh, subject, be subject not only for wrath, but also for what? Conscious sake. Not because uh, you think that you're going to go to jail, but do it for, have a peace of mind. Amen? So that you don't have to be looking around your shoulder every time you see some red lights come on. <laughs> uh, uh, you, uh, you don't have to be afraid. Huh? By, by, by when you get a letter in the mail. Huh, you follow me? Thank you, Lord, that got uh, the seal of the city on it. Notice this. <laughs> Notice. He says, Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause, pay ye tribute also. In other words, pay your taxes. Amen? Pay, pay your customs. Whatever is necessary, pay it. Amen? Hallelujah. Now notice, for they are God's ministers attending, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore uh, to all their dues. Amen? Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear is due, honor to whom honor is due. Now, uh, as we get back to our scripture, God wants you to respect authority. Amen? Uh, give people honor. Give people respect for their position. He didn't say whether or not they were operating in their position to the, to the, to the, uh, 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 how can I say it? I'm going to say it. To, to your standards. Amen? That doesn't matter. What matters is you honoring the position. Uh, oftentimes, I'm going to say it like this. We got two standards. We got the, uh, by which we uh, uh, live. We got a standard by which we think people should live, and we got a standard by which we live ourselves. Uh, and sometimes, uh, majority of times, those two standards, they, they, they conflict with one another. Amen? We expect more from other people than, than what we expect and give uh, from ourselves. Amen? We're more understanding of our own conditions and our issues than we are of people's, other people's conditions and issues. 
Ah, hang it on. Deacon Field? Well, um, back in the day, didn't they use that type of uh, biblical uh, sayings to keep people in slavery? I mean, um, what I'm saying is that to be subject to anybody, they have to be according to the will of God. You know, and, and, I, and that, that's why I have my issues with it, because I'm not going to be subject. Well, let me let me let me go back with you. All right, if you were here uh, about ten minutes ago, we we discussed that, amen, about being subject to uh, man's laws as long as they don't uh, violate the laws of God. All right, now let me let me correct you uh, on the other part where you said you're not going to be subject to ungodly people. You have to be subject to ungodly people because God, ungodly people could be your president, your governor, your police officers, and, they, they, and it's, not, it's not about uh, them being godly and acting in, a, in accordance with the laws of God, but God sets up institution. God sets up government. God sets up laws, and God wants you to respect them. Whether they are acting godly or ungodly, God wants you to respect them. That's what these scriptures that we just read uh, in your hearing uh, uh, has, has proven. Amen? It's not, and we do that because it is, it, it is uh, in relation, uh, as he said here, for the Lord's sake. Amen? Because we are God's uh, how can I say? It? We are God's servants. We are God's examples. We are God's light in this world. Amen. So I don't want y'all to get the idea that uh, just because I believe that this police officer is ungodly, uh, I don't care if he just uh, got through smoking the blood. If he if he tell you to stop, put your hands up. <laughs> what you gonna do? Stop. Put your hands up. Huh? Huh? And 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 follow direction. <laughs> follow direction. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because God has ordained. Huh? God has ordained. God put these things in order. Let's look at that again. Romans chapter thirteen, and He says, "Let every soul be." In verse number one, "Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers." For there is no power but of who? God. They don't have any authority and power except it come from God. Notice, uh, the powers that be are ordained of who? God. Wherefore, therefore, resist, uh, therefore, uh, whosoever therefore resists the power, they resisteth what? The ordinance of God. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. So, so, so we got to study that. Uh, that's uh, Romans 13, verse 1 through 7. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back to Peter. No, let, let's, let's go over here to uh, Ephesians uh, number 6. We're going to move off of this in a minute. Uh, but I'm trying to get, get you to see why should we do it. Amen. <laughs> why? why? First, we learn that it's pleasing to God. Why is it pleasing to God? Because he establishes order. He establishes laws. Amen? And they're ordained of him. Hallelujah. Now, uh, uh, Ephesians 6 and, and 7. This is, how, this is how we ought to do it so that it will be an easier pill for us to swallow. <laughs> yeah. Um, you were talking about the, um, he, put, he put certain institutions in order. Um, it's kind of like when you said be in the world and not of the world. Mm -hmm. We have to give honor to the institutions that are over us in this world. Yeah. Absolutely. But, um, you know, maybe you don't even have to, you know, uh, you have to be in the marriage until 18 years and older, you're okay. You know what it is. 
Yes. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, um, <laughs> the, the institution, I'm going to say this, y'all probably going to disagree with me. <laughs> uh, the institution of slavery, um, God is, is not against. Now y'all can say, ooh, what you talking about that? God is not against the institution of slavery in, in the sense that uh, people uh, are subject to other people and uh, working for them. And when 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 you borrow from an individual, you're actually, God considers you a slave unto them. When you borrow from an individual, when you owe others, it's a debt you owe and you, you are a slave unto them. Pay your debt. That's how God looks at slavery. Pay your debt. You owe an individual. Pay your debt. That's why uh, the scripture says, Owe no man nothing but love. Follow me? Now, now, man's institution of slavery is wicked. It's evil. Beating chaining up, separating from family, you know, for the whim of it, the will of it, that's, 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 that's evil in the sight of God. Amen. So I, I just have to clarify that. Right. I, th I think what was, in addition to that, what was, I think... But let me just say this, but what you're saying is 100% correct. I just had to clarify what slavery was. Yeah, that's why I said, um, when yeah. I was trying Right. Absolutely. And then you get your credit card and all that. Those are all, you're all being uh, voluntarily put in servitude. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And you know, when, 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 when we're dealing with, uh, I think that book of Philemon, Philemon was a runaway slave. Paul didn't tell him to keep running away. He told Philemon, go back, you know, and, and be subject to your master because that was, that was, that was the means. That was the law. You follow me? And he said, go back, be subject to your master. Then he told Philemon, he said, treat him like a brother. You know, treat him, treat, treat Onesimus. That was his name. Treat him like a brother. You know, so he didn't necessarily uh, down the institution of slavery. You know what I'm saying? But he, he wanted him to treat him like a brother. Don't be harsh on him. Be, 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 treat them with love and honor. That's why he says, servants, you know, be subject to your masters. You know, uh, you follow? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. So that, that institution back there, God didn't condemn it, because if he would have, they would have condemned it. You follow? But they condemned the, uh, but what should be condemned is the evil treatment of American slavery is evil. It's wicked. Uh, Dig your feelings. Yeah, I was thinking that. Uh, Ooh, we get into it now. I like it. Go ahead. It has to be a, like you said, a way to pay your debt. 
And yes. to keep someone in that type of status. Yes. It's evil. It's evil. And, and you have bosses that mm -hmm. won't never promote you because they want to have that authority over you. Yes. You, know, you have people that want to keep people in that position yes. of servitude yes. with no way out. And that's evil. That's evil. It's wicked. They have to be able to gain now. access out of it. Right. Now. If 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 I if I signed on the dotted line, and it's there's some there's some credit card companies out there, you know that 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 are wicked, you know, with that compound interest and all of this and that. You follow me? You take their money, you obligate yourself to them terms, and and whether you are aware of it or unaware of it. But once you uh, take those that money, you become subject to, to their terms, and God says, pay it. Don't, don't, don't say, well, uh-uh, this was wicked when I got it. You know, so I ain't paying. Mm. No. Nope, you wrong. Mm. You took the money. <laughs> Whether you were uh, realizing that you had to pay so much back, uh, uh, you took it. There was a, there's a couple, I wish I remember the name. Maybe the Lord don't want me to remember the name. Uh, I took a loan out and um, I come to find out, you know, I'm looking at my credit report that, that you know, I paid the loan back, everything. Uh, but because it came from them, it was a bad part on my credit report. You know, just because it came from that company. You know, because uh, that company uh, loaned money to people that are in trouble. Uh, I can't remember the name. Oh, Jesus, I forgot. Well, like I said, maybe the Lord don't want me to say it over here. <laughs> but but <laughs> they come back and get me. <laughs> but but uh, but you know we got to be careful. Amen. And they do make laws like that, like Deacon Deacon Field said. But but if we if we sign on the dotted line. And make promises to pay, we obligate. Amen. God say pay. Amen. God say pay. All right, this is good. This is good. I like this. Thank you, Lord. But I like, I like, I like what Queen said about uh, when she said institutions over us, and and that's what this scripture means. Amen. Institutions over us. Amen. God ordained for a reason and for a purpose. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. No, you got you to think about it in this respect. Not, not, not everybody is subject to God's kingdom. Amen. And his laws. So, therefore, you know, he has allowed and established another kingdom. Amen. That, that, that would be subject that would, that would keep those that aren't subject to his kingdom under control. A lot of people would obey man than obey God. Come on in. Huh? And, 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 and a lot of people in this world would rather obey man than God. So God is wise. Amen? And then he uses that when we submit uh, to the laws of man, uh, it brings praise and glory unto him. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. So we're doing it out of fear of God, not fear of that man. Right. Ooh, now that's a good segue. Let's, let's go to Ephesians 6 and 7. Good segue. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Deacon Fields don't want to obey man. <laughs> now notice, notice. Uh, uh, Ephesians 6 and 7. You obey with good will doing service as unto the Lord and not to them, not to men. See that? That's why, that's, that's, that's what makes that pill easier to swallow. As I said, you're doing it as unto the Lord. 
uh, and not, not unto men. I'm going to take this, I'm going to do this, uh, and, and, and I'm doing it as unto the Lord. I'm going to submit. I'm going to buy them. Amen. I'm going to give God glory. Amen. As unto the Lord. That's what uh, uh, I, I like to tease my wife. Sometimes I say, uh, uh, Sarah called Abraham over. <laughs> you know, and, you know and, 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 and she was she was deemed as an example. You know, what'd you say? <laughs> hey, don't give me any fuel to fight me. Don't give me no rocks to throw. <laughs> All right, let's go back to Second, uh, First Peter, chapter four. See, this is good. This is what Bible study about. I like this. All right, um, First Peter, um, yeah, chapter number two, and uh, verse number fourteen, and he says, "Or governors." as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. And we brought that out in uh, Romans chapter what, 13 verses 1 through 7. That, that gives you an idea of what that scripture means. Uh, verse uh, 15, it says, for so is the will of God. See, this is the will of God. That with well-doing, Ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In other words, people are going to talk about the saints. Mm -hmm. Amen? Talk about what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and people don't like you. Uh, the world. The world don't like you. Amen? And um, uh, God wants you to be an example. So when you do well and show forth honesty, Show forth submission. Show forth a good and an honest heart. Amen. That 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 brings that puts to uh, silence the ignorance of foolish men. People, I was I was I was it was I never forget it. Uh, it was I first got saved. It was uh, having Thanksgiving dinner at the house and. Uh, uh, my one cousin came, and uh, I don't know how we got on the subject. We got on the subject about giving of tithes and offerings, and he said, "That's dumb. Why do you do that? You know what I mean? That's foolish. You know." So, so we had to explain to him the principle. Did he did he get the principle? No. Why? Because his heart was set against it. But you know. Uh, that was some years ago. So I don't know uh, how God dealt with his heart or with his mind now, you know, at this point. But uh, he thought it was foolish. And God doesn't look at it as being foolish. That's the way of the kingdom. Amen? Things that we do, things that we say, People may think that it's foolish, but it brings glory and honor to God. Should I stop doing and bringing glory and honor to God because people think it's foolish? Paul said it not many uh, wise huh, are called. But we ought to live this life to silence those that that bring opposition to Christ. Amen? God's true and living way. In other words, uh, as somebody said earlier today, we ought to be contenders of the faith. Amen? Are we ought to contend for the faith. Uh, stand up for what's right. Stand up for holiness. Stand up for righteousness. Amen? And then when when you get around a group, I don't even do this myself. I just got like a two-edged sword here. That's bashing the president, that's bashing the government. You know, we ought to say, oh, that's ordained of God. I'm going to start saying that. You know, that just hit me. Say that. 
That's, that's ordained of God. You know, institutions that be, they are ordained of God. They say, where do you find that at? Romans chapter 13. Uh, 
marriage. You know, we don't, we don't get into same-sex marriage, but we get into the stipulations of marriage. Amen. Ordained ministry, certain age, things such, such as that. Follow me? The law, that's the law. You've got to be ordained to, to marry somebody. Or, or in some states, it just say, have a religious persuasion. So you can just say I'm religious and marry somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah! God gives us a free will to uh, choose. You know, Absolutely. It's not, no, it's not no demand that people do what you want. It's a free choice. But they say, like I said, they'll, you said they don't have no baby car. They get shot in the back of the head. Right. Boom. <laughs> Right. And we should live in a way that would compel people to want to be like us. But it's not, it's not to be like us. You got it. Be, be wicked. You got it. But we should live a life that would draw people instead of repel people. And, and when you get saved, God doesn't take away that will. That's why uh, Peter said in the beginning submit. Submit. Make a choice. Submit. All right, let's move on. All right, thank you, Lord. Uh, he says, verse 17, honor all men, love the brotherhood. The brotherhood is the saints, the fraternity, the body of Christ. Love the saints. And he says, then he says, fear God. That word fear there, as you know, means to reverence. Reverence God. Amen. And to, to reverence him in love and also that he's also a consuming fire. Now, the, 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 when you get to the point wherein you're reverencing God, not that uh, he's going to beat me, I don't want to say beat me, uh, uh, send me to hell, now God don't see him. Lord, help me, Lord, Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm serving God. Because I'm afraid to go to hell. I don't, I don't want to spend eternity separated from God. When you can get past that and reverence God just because you love him, the relationship changes. Amen? That's the kind of relationship God wants out of you. That's totally different. Amen? When I serve him because I want to please him. Because I love him. I don't, I'm not thinking about him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mother Davis? When you said that the scripture dropped in my mind, then we'll know as we follow on. Yeah. You got a, uh, when you first get in the church, you do have fear like that. When yes. But as you go on and you realize the ability of God and how he takes care of you, and, and what who he is. Yeah. You know, and then that's when it changes. You change. get away from that fear. And you, you serve, serve him out of love. And that love continues to grow as you walk with him. Yeah. And get better and better. And after a while, there is no fear. No fear. You Thank know, you, Lord. You're serving God for who he is, not for the punishment you think that you're going to get. You're going to receive. Up. Absolutely. Yes. Also, also sufficient. That's the maturity. Yeah. <laughs> Now you, uh, you ain't no longer sucking on milk. Right. Now you need that word. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, help me. Amen. Help us, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. relationship with him. Now then, notice then, uh, uh, verse 18, he says, servants, and those servants are slaves, servants, be subject to your masters. He didn't tell them to run away from them. 
<laughs> said, be subject to your master. Submit to your master. With all fear, the fear of God, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the forward, to the evil master. How we bring that to today is you may have some bosses that are good bosses. You may have some bosses that are not good bosses. He still tells you to be subject to them. Amen. Never forget that, that God repays evil, not us. Amen. God repays them. God is the avenger, not us. We ought to be examples. Am I right? Now, now notice then. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. That fear means their reverence. Give them reverence. Give them respect. Not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the poor. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience uh, toward God endure grief, suffering uh, wrongfully. They treat you wrong, they do you evil, and yet you for a good conscience towards God, you suffer. Amen? Give God praise, give God honor, give God glory. There's wicked people out there. Now, this is why uh, he's also telling you this, because not all authority uh, and people in authority are good. They're evil. They're wicked. Amen? But he still said, honor them. Am I right? Respect them. Don't do them evil. Don't do them wrong. Don't talk about them. Am I right? Uh, submit to their authority. I've heard some outlandishly, uh, uh, I don't want to say crazy bosses, but you know, uh, some that went right. You know, and 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 I don't like what they do, but uh, you know you gotta submit. Now, people that are under employment, they submit because they want a paycheck. But why not submit because you want to give God glory, magnify the name of the Lord. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Now notice, then, he said, For this is thankworthy if a man from conscience toward, toward God endure grief. You know, I want God to be pleased with me. You want God to be pleased with you. And, and for good conscience toward God, meaning that they do you evil, you don't cuss them out. They do you evil, you don't go flatten their time. Uh, why? Because you want to remain in God's good graces. They do you evil, you don't, you don't, you don't not show up to work. And halfway work. <laughs> you follow? Uh, honest days work for honest days pay. Amen. Why? Because you want God to be glorified. And you understand that God is the avenger of evil. Vengeance does not belong to us. But vengeance belongs to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And he will repay. Amen. You ain't got to worry about that. Fret not yourself because of evil do. For they shall soon be what? Cut off. I mean, not that we're rejoicing in that, but we have a knowledge of that. Amen? And even in that, I got to tell you this. Even in that, when God starts whooping up on those that are, are, are mistreating you, don't rejoice. Amen. God said, continue to pray for them. <laughs> and don't pray that God kill them by the mouth. Amen. We can do that sometimes. All right. Woo. All right. Here we go. What verse we in? All right, 19. All right? For this is thankworthy if, if 
a man for conscience toward God, notice, endure grief. You're going to have some grief, but you got to endure it. And, and suffering wrongfully. People in the world that are in authority, they're going to cause you to suffer sometimes. Amen. Wrongfully. But you got to endure it. Amen. Suffer through it. As unto the Lord. That's how you swallow that pill. Now, no. Now, uh, I got to say this. Once again, if, if people in position are trying to do quid pro pro uh, 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 sex, you know, for this, for this job, you don't do that. Uh, uh, telling you to do uh, wickedness, you know, uh, you don't do that. Uh, I've been in positions where they've told me, well, Frank, just lie on the form here and, uh, uh, and you know, we'll make it right. I'm like, well, no, I ain't going to be lying, you know, to make it right. You follow me? And you know, I, I walk away. They put on the form what they want to put on the form. But I ain't gonna do it. You follow me? Now I tell them, I, I'm not gonna do that because I don't lie. Oh, Frank. Come on, Frank. <laughs> hey! But I gotta have a good conscience toward God. <laughs> Come on. I, I, I had some that, that when they get ready to go on strike, when we're going to strike with him. But that boss told me to be at work. Uh -huh. Be there. Be there. When they want you to go on strike, they think that you're going against them. Right. Uh -huh. So the, 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 the authority told me to be at work. Right. So I'll be there. Be there. Absolutely. Will you be uh, looked at as evil? Yes. Oh, yeah. You will, you be look, will you be talked about? Yes. Yeah. But they talked about Jesus. Yeah. Huh? They're going to talk about you if you show up. <laughs> no matter what you do, folk gonna talk about you. Amen. Uh, how did, well, I ain't gonna say it like the world said. I said this way: darn if you do, and darn if you don't. <laughs> you follow me? All right. Now, now look. He says, twenty. Thank you. For what glory is it? If a man be buffeted, if ye be buffeted for your own faults, ye take it patient. All right, I did wrong, I take it patient. But if when you do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable unto God. God wants you to be able to endure wrongness that has happened to you and move on. Amen? Amen. Note. For even hereunto were ye what? Called. Call. Now, 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 my God, how much time do I have left? This is where you've been noticed. Called. Elected. Ordained. This is the reason why God brought you out of darkness. Huh? Into his marvelous life. Uh, so you've been called to do this. Called to be an example. Amen? This is why God elected you. This is why he gave you the Holy Ghost. This is why he sent Jesus. Uh, so that you'll be uh, 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 able to go through what we're talking about here. Under the power of the Holy Ghost. Call. Amen? What's that word called me? What verse we in? 21. 21. Selected, passionate, separated, chosen.
chosen for this, to suffer. Did you feel? Yeah, I was gonna say, growing up, I went with the oldest. Uh, when you show your parents respect, you know, the younger ones see that, that feels more honor to your parents. It put, it, it, they see you clean up your room. You go to the you know, clean it up. Clean up. Right. That, that, that's being an example to the young ones. Yes. And, and it's bringing honor to the parents. It's mm -hmm. like, well, he's doing it. Wow. You know, I let it go. Right. And it, 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 it sets the stage. You know, and, 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 and we let the young ones know it's worth it to, to be obedient. Yes. You know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a valuable thing to learn how to be subject to your parents. And that's what you teach them by example. Absolutely. And, and now you bring, you bring a dynamic point uh, uh, to, to life. Uh, being subject to your parents. That's an institution. An institution of God. Uh, marriage is an institution. It's an institution of God. Amen? Y'all with me? Those, those are institutions that are ordained of God that we ought to be subject to. Paul brings that out in Ephesians chapter number 6. Amen? Tells the wives and, and uh, to be subject to the husbands. Am I right? Huh? And tell the children to be subject to the parents. Am I right? Institutions of God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that, that just hit me. You know what I mean? Why? Because people make mistakes. Human issues. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, though. Oh, I'm finished. Oh, but that's true. Uh, no matter what institution, even the institution of the church, uh, you're going to suffer some things. Wow. Wow. Go ahead. I was going to say, too, we as people have a problem with the way God words things. Yeah. Woo! Because when he mentioned master, and we say master, you you know, your husband and your master, we get we get offended by that. When yeah. he says, you know, submit yourself. But right. then we, we are offended, really, at God, like you said, because... I mean, why did you get married if you ain't gonna obey your husband? Right. That's what master means. Just be obedient, you right? Because that's your leader, right? You know, at that particular, as you know, you get married. So we, as people, we as humans, have a problem with the way God words things. Yes. We don't understand, and we don't take time to to uh, search it out or anything. We just, if somebody say a word and it don't sound right to us, we just get all offended. But. You know, God means what he said, and he said what he means. And if we don't do it according to the way and how he said for us to do it, then we're out of his will. Absolutely. The reason why we, we, we get upset with him because of our rebellious nature. It's in us to rebel. Amen? And then, and then also, uh, uh, we're ignorant of God's laws. We then uh, make our own laws, and then we become a law unto ourselves. You know, I make up my own way of thinking of how it should be, and this is how I'm going to govern myself, and I pass that on to other people. But he said, the blind lead the blind, they all going to fall in the ditch. Amen? And, and, and what you said too, interpretation. Amen? When God says something, he can totally mean it totally different than what we receive. Amen? And God looks at it as being honorable. There's a reason why God said that. If you go back to the book of Genesis, uh, and, and God tells you why he did that, because of what he did. Huh? Oh, now y'all got quiet on that. <laughs> All right, Sister Queen, we're going to move forward. Woo, Jesus. Should you still submit?
Mitchell. Yes. 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 Oh, oh shame. Love your wives. Christ loved you. Yeah. The church. And gave yeah. himself yeah. for Yes. Right. So, so the man ought to submit to that. Come on. Come on in. All right, Charlene. <laughs> Dig it, Phil. understand what God means by that. When, when people understand that, it becomes glorious. Uh, it, becomes, it becomes awesome. Because then the man will do what Sister Charlene said, love the wife as Christ loved the church uh, and gave himself for it. Amen. And sanctified Hallelujah. That's awesome. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, we give you some stuff like tonight. Uh, submission. If we really get it right, Bishop, that wouldn't be any different. It wouldn't be any divorce. Yeah. Uh-uh. But first, God told us to uh, acknowledge him in all of our ways. If we acknowledge him, then we wouldn't make a mistake. We'll get the right man or woman in the first time. Oh. Uh, uh, let me get it right. Ruth and Naomi. Which one was the mother? Naomi. Naomi. Thank you. That's why I wanted to get it right. Naomi lived so that and showed Ruth so much love that Ruth said, your God is going to be my God. Your people are going to be my people. That's love. Amen? Show them that much love. That's unity. Amen? That's love. In a marriage, the reason why I bring that up is that's how it should be. The man should love the wife so that, that, that the wife would want to be one with him and his God. Not that, you know, she don't serve God on her own. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just talking about the unity. Right. The structure. And, and, that's, and the woman should be loving the man too. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Bible, absolutely. Now see, now we're getting into marriage Bible class now. Uh, 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 the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, in that particular scripture in the book of Ephesians, what we're talking about, it says for the woman to reverence her husband. From to respect him, to honor him. Amen? Respect and honor. And, and, and he uses that word for a reason. Why? Because he is to represent the authority. Amen? So that goes... Back to what they're talking about, our Bible study, about submission. Submit to the authority. He also picked it up uh, uh, for the husbands, for the wives to submit to the husbands 
as it is pleasing to the Lord. Why? Because you got some wicked husbands out there. Amen? He said, don't, don't be dumb. You know, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't submit to wicked stuff. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, good. Woo! See, that's why it's good to study the Bible. We can answer all these questions. <laughs> all right, where we at? Jesus, Lord, have mercy. 21. He says, <laughs> for, unto, for even unto, here, here unto were you called. You were called to be servants. Called to suffer wrong. Called to, to, to uh, suffer wrong for righteousness sake. Amen? God gets glory out of it. He, he, when you suffer wrong and do good, it's like heaping coals upon the head of your enemy. Amen? That's why he said well, if your enemy hunger, do what? Feed him. If he's thirsty, do what? He didn't say tell them all. He didn't say cuss them out. Did he? No. Amen. And then, you know, we take that scripture out of context too. And I want to get this in you. Uh, when he talks about uh, give to him that asketh of thee. Uh, he's not talking about give to everybody that asks you so, of something. He's talking about give to him that is your enemy. And they're asking something from you. Give it to them. Help them out. That's what he's talking about. Y'all got quiet with me. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. You need the Holy Ghost to walk with the Lord. Come on, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You didn't spit on me. Now I got to give you a ride. Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now notice this. Notice. Verse, verse uh, 21. For even so were you called. Notice. Because Christ almost also suffered for who? For us. As Christ suffered for us, we ought to suffer for the Lord. Think about that for a minute. Let that sink in. As Christ suffered for you, you suffer for God. You suffer for him. Amen? Christ was beat, wasn't he? He was lied on, wasn't he? Spit upon, wasn't he? Hung on the cross. Stabbed, wasn't he? Ridiculed, despised, rejected. Uh, he did that because he was suffering for the Father. As, as, as Christ suffered for the Father, you suffer for the Father. He did all of that knowing that he was innocent. Innocent! Mm -hmm. uh, mm. But he did it anyway. Amen? Dig your field? certainly thank God as we have to pick up on next week uh, at this particular scriptures and we thank God uh, for you all pressing your way, coming on out. Amen. I hope, hope something was said and done. I enjoyed the Bible study tonight. Amen. Amen. We, 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 we've gone some places where no man has gone before. <laughs> thank you. And we certainly thank God for our, our listeners and our viewers that tuned in with us and as it's offering time in the sanctuary, and you're able to give through our Tithely app, just go to uh, Christian Ministries, uh, Tithely, find Christian Ministries, and give accordingly. We thank God and praise God for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.